two devices communicate over a computer network. So without wasting another second, here we go. If I had this type of explanation a long number of years ago when I was first getting started in my own career in computer networking, it would have made it all so very clear to me. And I love to use this simple explanation to really give those that are new to networking a really good clear example like this one to help them truly understand what's happening and how things work. So what we're going to do, we're going to see what happens to this data as it travels through the network from the host computer on the left here to the host or computer on the right. But before we we do that we need to identify what's going on here with these two different networks that are connected to each other here we have a router or a layer 3 device that can do some routing here in the center and that's what this uh, symbol is usually represented with when you see this on a diagram that usually represents a layer 3 device or typically a router so we have a router here in the middle we have a LAN a local area network over here on the left hand side of the router with a layer 2 switch and this first host or this computer that we're actually going to be sending the data from. And we have another LAN or local area network on the right hand side of the router with a switch and the other host or the other computer on the other side, on the right hand side. And these two LANs are connected to each other and divided apart by, guess what, the layer 3 device, the router in the middle. For the network on the left, we're going to use, for this example, a private range of IP addresses in the 192.168.100.0 network, or you can call it a subnet. If you get into subnetting, same thing. That's a that's a subnetwork. And for the network on the right-hand side, we're going to use the private IP addresses in the 10.10.10.0 network, or subnet, if you will. Two different private networks that we're connecting together over this router. And each one of our hosts on each of these two networks, the hosts on the end here, already have specific assigned IP addresses, and each of their NICs, their network interface cards, already has specific MAC addresses. Now remember, every node on a network has an IP address and a MAC address, right? They have two addresses, so your host has both of these, an IP address and a MAC address. This first host on the left-hand side of the network will say is using IP address 192.168.100.2 with all A's for its own MAC address. Now, this is just for an example. It's not a real MAC address, but let's just do this for this example. So its MAC address is all A's, AA-AA-AA. Dash AA dash AA dash AA. Okay. The host on the right hand side network will say is using an IP address since it's in the 10.10.10.0 network. It's going to have an IP address for itself of 10.10.10.2 and it's going to have all B's for its MAC address. Again, just for an example. This is not a real MAC address, but this is just to make this whole example really simple. Now we do have to understand what the IP address and the MAC address is of the router as well. Normally we only think of routers in terms of IP, but they do have MAC addresses. So each interface on a router or a switch is also like another network interface card or NIC interface and each of those is going to have its own MAC address and the router is called the default gateway for a network whenever a computer needs to go to it to get to another network. For example, for this computer on the left that we're starting with, the one that's actually sending the data out, if it needs to communicate with a network on the right, which it's going to have to to get to the host on the far right, it's going to have to talk to its default gateway to get over to that network. That's what the default gateway is. It's the gateway to get to other networks or to external networks other than the network it's in. It's the router that will get you out to other networks kind of like the internet or the interwebs. The, the internet is, that's what the internet is. It's an external network typically to a private network and that's what your default gateway is. It's the router connected to those external networks or that can route or connect traffic out to those other networks. And you'll see in your IP config you have you have one typically at home and it's basically your own router's IP, right, for your house. So that's what default gateway is, but we do have IP addresses and MAC addresses assigned to each individual interface of the router as well, not just one. This router doesn't have just one IP address, it specializes in routing network traffic from one network to another. So it's going to have multiple IP addresses, and again, each IP address, each interface of the router, will also have a MAC address associated with it for those particular interfaces. And we're going to see how this relates as the traffic kind of travels through here. We're going to go through this example really, really make it simple and easy for you. Okay, so let's look at that now. 
understand now we have two different local area networks. We have the 192.168.100.0 and the 10.10.10.0. And host 192.168.100.2 is going to send a message to 10.10.10.2. So it says, I want to send this data, whatever this data up here is, but I want to send this data over to 10.10.10.2. Okay, so let's see what happens. So it's going to take this data, and before it can send it out, it first needs to create an IP packet. So this IP packet is going to have the destination address. It knows that the host it wants to send it to is 10.10.10.2. So it puts that on the IP packet, the destination IP address, right? It also puts its own IP address in the IP packet as well, and that's known as the source IP address. So in the header, we have the source, which is 192.168.10.2, and we have the destination, which is 10.10.10.2. So it creates that packet, and it stuffs all the data in there into that packet. So now it has this packet. Now what does it need to do with this packet before it can send it out on the Ethernet LAN? Well it needs to create a frame. So it creates the frame and it's going to put the MAC address information in the frame, right? The destination MAC address and really the source MAC address. So well what is the destination MAC address going to be? It actually doesn't know the MAC address of the other computer, the other host, the 10.10.10.2 because it's on a different network. So it doesn't really, this first host on the left hand side doesn't know what the MAC address is of the host on the right hand side. It only knows the MAC addresses of computers on its local network. But what it does have is a default gateway. And this computer knows the MAC address of its own default gateway. You see this gig 00 interface here on the router? Now, th these interfaces can all be diff called different things, but these are typical gigabit interface naming nomenclatures that we use on a router. So we're going to use gig 00 and gig 01 as the two interfaces on this router. So this gig 00 interface here has a MAC address of all Cs. So it's going to actually put a destination MAC address on the header of this frame, this first host here, of all Cs here. So that it will actually get to the default gateway. And it knows to do this because it knows its default gateway is this MAC address and it knows its MAC address. Okay, so it knows this information. So it has this frame and it's putting the addressing information on it and now it has this packet as well. And it stuffs the packet into the frame. So now we just have a frame. Took the data, put it into the packet, took the packet, put it into the frame. Just like we talked about before, but we're excluding the TCP part for simplicity purposes here. And we get more into that in the new to networking course, if you get into that or when you get into that. Here, for the purposes of this example, to keep it simple, we're just saying it's already happened. We're just going from data to packet to frame. All right, so we've stuffed it all in there. So now, since we have a destination MAC address of all C's, the default gateway, we're going to see how it actually gets there. So the computer sends it out on the LAN and it gets to what? It goes to the switch first, this first switch. Now the switch actually takes that frame and looks at it and it opens up the header and it says, oh, hmm, I see cc-cc-cc-cc-cc-cc as the destination MAC address. So I'm just going to go ahead and send it out my port that is connected to that MAC address. Because remember, this switch has a table, a CAM table, whereby it has detected the MAC addresses of all devices connected to it and which ports of the switch those are on. And it knows exactly where this router is connected with all C's in its MAC address. So it sends it out to the port to that router. Boom. It makes it to the router. Then the router goes, oh... I have some information here. Let me go ahead and look at that. And it takes the frame. It analyzes the frame's MAC header. And it says, oh, the frame's MAC header is all C's. And it knows this frame is for me. So let me open this up further. So it opens up further. And what it finds is the IP packet, right? And now it looks at the packet header information. And it sees that the destination IP in the IP packet header is 10.10.10.2. And it says... Oh, okay, let's see. I know where that is. So then it takes that packet. It doesn't change the destination IP address. It leaves that the same. And it puts it back into a frame. And on this new frame, it's a brand new frame. What it does is it changes the MAC address header to all Bs. 
bb dash bb dash bb dash bb dash bb dash bb so that it can be sent off to the other host on the far right. And it knows this by looking in its own routing table and discovering that anything destined for the 10.10.10.0 network needs to be sent out the gigabit 01 or G01 interface with destination MAC address all Bs. And then it says, all right, got the frame me packaged and I'm sending it off to the host. And it sends it out onto the network on the right. Then it immediately makes it to the switch in the network on the right. The switch then has a look at that frame as well. And it says, oh, let's see, the frame header says the destination MAC address is bb-bb-bb-bb-bb-bb. I know where that is. That's connected to my port gigabit ethernet 010, or you know whatever the port number is that the host on the right is actually connected to on the switch. And it then sends it out that port that it has. I just made that port number up, but you get the idea. But it sends it out directly to that host, and then the host receives it. The host is like, ooh, sweet, I got a frame, let's see. And then it opens it up, and it looks at the frame header and the destination MAC address in the header, and it sees that it's all Bs, right? And it says, oh, that must be for me. So it opens up the frame completely getting to the packet and then it looks at the IP packet destination and it says oh cool this is for me it's for 10.10.10.2 and it came from 192.168.100.2 my buddy over there on the left hand side all right this must have something interesting in it so then it takes the data out of that packet and it can then analyze it now what does it do with the packet and the frame now well it destroys those things and is left with just the data and now the host can say hmm let me go ahead and take a take this data and figure out what it means and it runs it through its applications or whatever and the data was meant to go through in this case it was a jpeg image of a cat <laughs> so why do people keep sending me pictures of cats from the internet thank you 192.168.100.2 i appreciate the message and that's how this works that's how packets go to frames which go to packets again, which go to frames, which sometimes go to packets again, and then go to frames again, and then get decapsulated by the host eventually where it can pull the data out and find that really cool picture of the cat in this instance. And that is the basics of how the communication on a computer network works. Now, obviously, it's not comprehensive of all of the technologies and protocols and history and advancements in computer networking, but it should give you a good foundation to start with on your own networking career or your own business.